Hallo Musikerboard, wir sind hier auf der NAM und äh, haben die Ehre mal mit Eric Persing zu sprechen über die neuen Produkte von, Ke äh, von Spectrasonics. Um, so I uh, uh, bond over to, to Eric. Eric, nice to be here with you and uh, thanks for your time. And uh, our community is curious about your products. Uh, maybe you can tell us about any products that you pro provide and any updates, any new products in the future. Um, and about mostly maybe about Keyscape, I don't know. Sure, sure, okay. Sure. Great, great. Thanks, great to be with you guys. And uh, we've got, uh, of course, we just re released Keyscape in September. It's the largest selection of collector keyboards in the world. And we spent 10 years making this product. It's a long time and uh, really, really detailed. So that's been getting a great response. Uh, but we have something new uh, that we just are introducing for uh, at NAM, which is a Keyscape Creative. And now you can use Keyscape inside Omnisphere Uh, just to host it, but what's even more interesting is using Keyscape as an oscillator inside Omnisphere. So you can actually transform the keyboard sounds of Keyscape into totally new, really interesting electronic sounds using this powerful steam engine in, in Omnisphere 2. So this Keyscape Creative is a brand new library of over 1,200 cutting edge Omnisphere patches for people who own both Omnisphere and Keyscape. And it's, uh, it's amazing, the sounds, we have a, a lot of new members of our sound uh, development team. And so we spent over a year actually making these patches and uh, all kinds of different genres, really interesting film sounds, and, and the transformation of the sound is pretty remarkable. You know, we're turning the uh, acoustic piano into drums and all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, and but really useful, playable sounds, uh, sound effects. It's like a, it could basically be its own virtual instrument. It's that big. It's actually even more than our atmosphere instrument. So it's like it's, it's huge, but it's available uh, now, and it's free. So it's it's 100% free. You just have to uh, have Omnisphere 2 and Keyscape, update the products uh, to the latest version, and you'll see it inside Omnisphere 2, and it's awesome and it's available now. So. That's what we're showing for now. Okay. So, are there any plans to do to build any new more VA uh, emulations into Keyscape or Omnisphere? Like uh, CS80 would be quite interesting to have a have an emulation for about this. Yeah. Well, of course, I'm a huge CS80 fan. I have a CS80 myself, and uh, it's MIDI and working. It's my favorite synth. Um, so we, you know, we're always interested in this kind of stuff, but. I think for us, uh, we, we have done actually uh, a good deal of that in Omnisphere. So I don't know if you, uh, many people I think don't realize that in Omnisphere 2, we added uh, many uh, modeled oscillator types from the CS80, from, uh, we have over 400 different uh, models of really unique things and really classic things. So uh, there's a lot there that actually a lot of people don't even realize. Because we went from four waveforms to 400 wave tables, so that's a big difference. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, we're always uh, interested in that. You know, exploring more modeling stuff uh, and the combination of modeling and sampling. Uh, it's, you know, it's very interesting because then you get the real sound with the processing. That's you know. So yeah, you can. You'll, we got some interesting stuff coming. You'll see. <laughs> okay. So uh, one of one more question would be: Is there any plan to build or to release a, a hardware, a standalone player with uh, with, uh, with Spectronics uh, products, Keyscape, as a expander? Well, it's interesting. The, the The hardware business is a completely different kind of business, of course. And uh, it's, it's very difficult to make uh, a high-end performing product like that uh, for the kind of price that people would like to have. Uh, I made, uh, I've made two prototype hardware instruments that some people might know about. If you do a web search, you'll find, uh, we, I made something called the OMG-1, which was, I modified a, a Moog a Little Fatty, and I put two iPads in it, and a Mac Mini on the inside, And it's all internally connected to Omnisphere and Keyscape and everything. That's what I perform with, actually. And um, so, so I'm, I have a lot of interest in this area, but I haven't figured out how to do it uh, to make a business out of it. 
because like when I showed that that instrument, it's, it's beautiful. It has ebony sides and beautiful uh, rosewood and curly maple, and it's gorgeous. It's it's really amazing. And on the internet, when it, when that came out, people were saying that's amazing. I would pay six hundred dollars for that easily, six hundred dollars. But of course, my parts, the the raw parts, is eight thousand dollars. So, <laughs> and so it, it's I think you know people's expectations are very high. And so it's a different business. We do what we do uh, very well by focusing on software. But it is an interest, it's an area of interest for me. So it would be a, kind of a dream come true to, to do something like that. I just haven't figured out how to do it to where it would work with our company and that kind of thing. So, uh, but it is certainly a, an, area, an area of interest. Uh, it's kind of the missing ingredient, having the tactile thing. So. I understand. So my, my last question is, when we talk about more software than hardware, what, what uh, do you think about iOS apps? Are there apps on an, on an iPad running instead of having a PC or a MacBook on stage? Uh, do, did you have any experience with building apps or any ideas to build apps in the future? Yeah, we, have, um, we released uh, with Omnisphere, we have an app called OmniTR, which is a touch remote controller. It's free. And it remote controls your computer, and it's it's really great. If you have Omnisphere and you haven't downloaded that app, and you have an iPad, you should definitely get it. It's free, and it's amazing. You can touch the orb and all of that kind of stuff. It's really cool. Uh, so we so we we know how to build iPad apps, the but there are some challenges with at the level that we're doing things. The iPads, you know, and iPhones and stuff, it, they're they're not at the same level. Uh, the storage that you need. And then also, we're not so interested in this business because uh, of uh, Apple could, uh, and the, the platform companies control this business. So you have to do everything the way they want you to do it. And also, the customers are used to paying $1, $10. We make $500 products. So to have a $500 iPad app, you know, it'll just be people will hate us, right? So for us, we really make professional instruments. And while the iPad thing is interesting and, and we like it, for us it's more of a uh, way to control it. And we have some ideas about some things we'd like to do in that area, but it's not our main focus. Our main focus is with a computer and making great sounding professional virtual instruments. Yeah. So thank you again for your time. I appreciate it much. And uh, yeah, that's going on. And we expect what you get from you as, first, as, as next time. So. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you. Take care, guys. Yeah. <laughs>